one Sue here from One Eye Auto, and today I have a 2013 Toyota Camry in the shop. It's got the V6 in it, 3.5 liter, and I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the surf belt tensioner. Big job. If you need that part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to oneayauto.com. Disconnect your negative side of the battery, 10 millimeter wrench. Just get that right off that terminal. And I like to make sure it's down out of the way and it won't come up back up and rest while I'm down below working. To take the undercarriage shield down, we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and a body clip tool. Uh, this car has had the shield down, somebody replaced. So for the most part, it should be a 10 millimeter socket, but this one someone put in, they are actually standard 13 or half inch socket, so I'm just gonna take them down. Switch over to the 10. So you're gonna do the same per side. So there's those three bolts with that little rubber vent just directs the airflow. You're gonna take those down and then you're gonna have one, two, three, four across the front and then one body clip. I'm gonna do the body clip. There's the R for right side. Passenger side. And the L for left side. Once your shields are down, you can see the lower part of your radiator and you'll see the drain right there, the petcock, and it's just a plastic butterfly. Sometimes you can do it by hand, and sometimes you can't. I just use a pair of small pliers and I just grab it gently and give it a slight twist. Then I'll use my hand. I have my catch bucket ready to go. Now we've lowered the vehicle. I'm still draining the radiator while I work on the top here. And to let the radiator drain a little faster, I'm gonna release the cap, take the pressure off. I just rest it on top. Now to take the shroud off, the top shroud, these buttons on Toyotas are push in. So you're gonna push them in halfway. They all click down. All the way over. And now I'm going to pull the whole shroud up with one motion. Put that there. Now I can just lift that aside. To remove the radiator overflow reservoir tank, it's a 10 millimeter socket for two mounting bolts and then just the hose. So I'm just going to take this one off, and this one. And all you gotta do is take the overflow hose, sometimes just pinch it and pull. And you lift your tank right up. To remove the serpentine belt, you need a special tool or a really long wrench. On this case, it's a 14 millimeter head on a tensioner bolt. So I've got the open end on our extended handle and we sell these this tool on one auto site and it comes with several other sockets and an extension for angles and I can use it just with this one with the crow's foot and slide it right on that the bolt of the tensioner and you're gonna go counterclockwise so I'm gonna go back like this now you can see the belt has no tension on it I'm just gonna reach down and take the belt off it does cause to be a little careful because heaven forbid the tool should slip and your fingers are down there. So once the belt is off, just take the tension off and take the tool so you don't have to worry about it. Take it off all the pulleys. The crank is probably gonna be the hardest one to reach from up on top here. So now I have the belt off of every pulley except for the crank and the actual tensioner. And you can't get the tool out because the tension's all the way down and it's bottoming out on the top radiator rail. So what I do is I leave the belt on the crank and I'm gonna hold the belt, and I'm gonna pull this pulley up, and I'm gonna hold onto the belt as fast as I can, and as strong as I can, to take the tool off. And it came off the crank. So I took the belt, it's around the crank, around the pulley, and I brought it out back here under this wishbone mount motor support. So now I can take the tensioner right off, 
and slowly let go of the belt. And then I just slide the belt up, off the crank, pull it right out. Now I'm gonna take the air box breather off from the radiator support, 10 millimeter socket. Now I get to undo the vacuum hoses that are attached to it. And then the clips for this. So if you flip it over this way. There we go. Now we can see the actual connectors. And you just get a pair of pliers or needle nose pliers. And you can just squeeze these little ears. And the piece will pop right out. Before I took the air dam off, I had pre-disconnected the solenoid here, and this is what it looks like. It's just a push-down tab, and it's located right here. It's an EVAP solenoid. Squeeze on the tab, pull it out. Then I undid the harness from the air, air dam, and now it's attached to the radiator fan shroud, so I'm going to take a body tool, and I'm going to put it right down in there and see if I can hopefully not break it, because I like to reuse the clips. Get that out of the way. We're going to take this lower air dam to the ear box. Disconnect that. Now I can see that I have one, two more for this harness alone. And I'm going to get a pair of needle nose so I don't break it. So you can reach down in there, grab those little tab ears on it. Pull that forward. Like that. That's connected here to this module. As you can see, just push down on this tab and then push it off. One more over here. With the radiator still draining, I'm going to disconnect the upper radiator hose clamp. I'm just going to use a pair of pliers, bring it down. I can just grab that hose and Give it a quick twist. If it doesn't come free like this one isn't. Some people use big channel locks, pliers. I like to be careful with the teeth of a plier on that hose. So they do make a tool that is a pick-like. So they make this tool so that you can place it on a hose and work it between the radiator or the, the actual attachment part. But the idea is not to Damage the hose. There we go, finally. So now you're going to separate that, the hose, how it sticks to the plastic. Just bring it all the way around. There you go. Now we have a little clip here holding this harness for the O2 sensor. It's not a necessity, but I don't like to put strain on wires. And that's tension, a lot of tension right there, so I'm just going to undo this clip so that I can fold the upper radiator hose back. Well, I've worked on a lot of Toyotas, and I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Take that clamp out of the way, and now we can fold the upper radiator hose up. Make sure it's secure, you know, we're flapping back, spraying it, cooling all over your face. You have to remove the upper radiator support, so I'm going to disconnect just the wires to the horns. And you see these buttons right here, just going to push down on that tab, pull the connector off, both horns. And now we're going to take these three mounting bolts for this latch. Two for the latch and one for the center post, 10 millimeter wrench. can actually just let that leave that attached, I think. Actually, the cable's gonna run through here, and there's probably a clip somewhere along the line. So I am gonna make sure that that latch is available to come completely out. Set that down. Now we're gonna undo this bracket. Same 10 millimeter wrench, same spot on the other side. 
I can use a socket for the top too. 10 millimeter. Now we should be able to lift this right up with possibly a cable over here. Holding it. There's the cable that I was talking about. So here's the tab right there. I see it. Nice pair of flat nose or needle nose. And we can lift that right up out of the way. Now we're going to undo the AC condenser. It's bolted to the actual radiator with four mounting bolts. Two on the top and two on the bottom. 10 millimeter socket and we'll just break these free. You don't want to have to disconnect the AC lines at, just to do this job. Um, that's a whole separate job at AC service. So let's cut down on the expense and we can go around that. They're not long, the little short bolts. And then there's two on the bottom. <laughs> Dropped it. And then one over here. Now you're not going to be able to lift this condenser up and out. It's basically going to stay right in place because the AC lines are attached to it. We're just separating it from the radiator. Okay, now at this point we have to take the lower radiator hose off. So I'm going to raise the vehicle back up, take the clamp off of that, and make sure that my automatic training lines, which I don't believe go through this radiator on this style, it has a separate cooler. If you have an older model or a model of someone like this that doesn't have that separate cooler, there should be, there will be automatic transmission lines mounted on the bottom. The, the radiator almost finished raining, just dripping very little, but this, the petcock is above the actual lower radiator, so we're going to get coolant out of this still. So I just hand tighten that. I'm going to just lock it with my pliers. Just an eighth of a turn right there, you saw it. That way, I, if I don't forget and I'm re reinstalling this radiator, I don't have any leaks. So now to take the clamp off, just use a pair of pliers and work it up the hose. Make sure I move your bucket over and hope you don't get soaked. <laughs> Let's see if it will even loosen up. Nope. I'll have to use my, my tool. Here she comes. Let's hopefully I don't get. <laughs> awesome. Now we can lower the vehicle and pull the radiator and fan shroud from the top. So to take the fan shroud off the radiator, now at this point I'm ready to disconnect. I can pull the whole thing out. My electrical lines are disconnected. The fans are attached to each other. That's the only lines that are left. Low radio hose is off. There's no automatic transmission lines to the radiator. So I'm ready to lift this thing up and take it all out. But I want to show you if you're not replacing your radiator, you don't have to take the whole radiator out with the shrouds if you're doing just the fans. It'd still be just as easy. And then you can actually hose your radiator down and clean it. So you can let it have a better cooling and examine it, make sure there's no pinholes in that radiator or ready to rot. But we're going to just see if we can pull this out. So there's clips, no bolts. You used to have little 10 millimeter head bolts on this. But these are two pinch clips here. I'm going to pull that there. Then I've got two here and two here. And there is our shroud. Now let's see if it clears everything. It doesn't look like it's going to clear the upper radiator too easy, but we'll see what we can get done. Uh -huh, I see what's going on. So there is a plastic clamp that holds the radiator lower hose to the shroud. So in order not to get too lost in that, I'm just going to take the clamp off the top of the lower radiator hose where it meets over here. And we will take the whole hose out with the shroud. There we go. Here we 
yeah, need the tool again. There you go. Ah, oh, there it is. Not too bad. Now with the fan shroud out of the way, the radiator is ready to come up. I'm just gonna pull it straight up. Now don't forget there's residual. There's some residual coolant in there, so don't tip it that way. And there's your radiator. At this point, we're gonna take this engine cover off. Just lift it up. Now we're gonna disconnect the harness from the alternator and the AC compressor. So the regulator, connector for the harness on the alternator is just this button right here. We're gonna push down on that and wiggle it out. You gotta take the rubber boot off the alternator. We've already disconnected our battery negative, so we don't have to worry about that. It's a 10 millimeter socket or wrench. I'm gonna break this bolt free. And lose it. <laughs> Look at that, we found it. I like to, so I don't lose it. Put it right back on the alternator. Now the harness itself is bolted to the bracket off the alternator, so we're gonna take that off also. 10 millimeter socket. And we have some connectors down on that AC compressor. Right here you have a little tab to get this harness to move. Just push that tab out with a flathead screwdriver or your fingernail and lift up on it. There we go. Let's follow the harness down. So we have one connector right here. I'm gonna undo the clip up here also and disconnect this cam sensor up front here. Just, I just want more play in the harness just to, so I don't force wires or break wires. Now I actually can see some of these connectors a lot easier. Hopefully you'll be able to push them. There's one. This is the one that was giving me a hard time with this tab. I'm gonna send out an SOS signal. <laughs> I need help. That's got some sand in it. That's why it was so tough. See that? All right, and then uh, one right here. You can hear the sand crunching. Now there's a bracket that holds all that on there. So I'm gonna grab my socket, 10 millimeter ratchet. I've got one more bracket down here. At this point, I think I'm gonna move that AC bucket, I mean the AC bucket, the coolant bucket, because I foresee tools and bolts going for a swim. <laughs> we don't want that. Ah, there you go. Now, now you get more movement there. We'll get that alternator right out of the way after I move the bucket. So now we're clear to get the alternator out of the way. It's a 14 millimeter socket, two mounting bolts, one up here and one down on the bottom. There's one, and there's the other one, right there. Good thing is once these things are loose, they're easy to get with the hand. There's the top one, and here comes the bottom. Let's see if they're the same length or two different bolts. There we go, so now we know. Top one's a longer one, bottom one's a short one. So there is one bolt in the back here of the alternator. You've got the top bolt, the one on the front, and then back here, and I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter swivel, just with an extension, I'm gonna go right back there, and hopefully get back on it. There we go. There we go. It's a heck of a place. You don't see many Toyotas with that bolt back there. 
You might be able to get it with a quarter inch drive if you don't have swivel sockets. Uh, I did, that's about it. I think you're gonna get it with anything else. I could barely put my hand in there, feel it. And you can see the difference now, it's already ready to fall out, the alternator is. Now once you get the bolt out, there it is, a little small bolt. Make sure the harness is out of the way. And just pull the alternator right up. So there's a bracket right here that attaches the alternator. So I see that the bracket now has a bolt straight on. All right, so I just wanna go over a few things real quick. So the alternator sits in here. We had the top bolt and then we had the second bolt. And then this was mounted like this and it, it wouldn't come out. So unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize the bracket because I couldn't see behind the alternator that it's mounted here. So you can undo this bolt, but then you're gonna run into the condition of the harness. The harness is attached to this bracket right there. So I feel that the way I did it is gonna end up being always the easiest way. And now if I take it, the bracket off of the harness, like that, and attach it to the alternator, then you're never gonna be able to put that harness back on once that alternator's in. At least I don't think you're going to. I think it's gonna be really hard to do that. Heck, I can't even get the bracket off the harness. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just leave it. So once again, I'm gonna put that bolt back in on here so that this harness will stay there. So I'm gonna put this bolt back in and uh, I'm not gonna really tighten it until the alternator goes back in because that way I have the freedom of, of wiggling around while I center the bolt in the, the alternator. Four bolts that hold the AC compressor in, 12 millimeter socket, two right here on the top you can see. I just use an extension. Now I'm not taking them all the way out until I take the two bottom ones out. So they're identical on the bottom here. They're just a little hard to see because the AC compressor itself is in the way. And I said before, once again, we're not taking any of the Freon out of the AC. We're just moving the compressor aside so we can get to the actual tensioner bracket. And there's four bolts holding the AC compressor on and they're all 12 millimeter socket. So we have the last bolt here. I've already taken the two bottom ones out. It's just as identical as these two on the top. Take them both out of the way. I'm gonna grab the other two here and show them to you. So these are the two top ones. These are the two bottom ones. I always like to do this, compare. We have all four the same length. No worries, bingo. All, now we're gonna take this AC compressor and we're just gonna lift it up and pull it back some. Let it rest down on that cross number, just like that. So the bracket that we're replacing is the surf belt tensioner, and it is these four right here, or five shall I say, I think. One, two, three, four, and then five. They look like all 14 millimeter socket, so we're gonna use a 14 millimeter deep. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm gonna use air. I'm gonna use an air gun, 3 8 air gun with a impact swivel 14 millimeter socket. That way I can really get these out of the way. Notice how I stop to look at the lengths of everything so I can memorize where they went. You'll have to hold the AC compressor back to get to that bottom one. We'll get to another angle. It. Yep, all the bottom bolts are the same. Let's see if that one top bolt is the same. And that's that's going to be the different bolt. That's the one long one. So you have four bolts of the same length and then the top one. Self-explanatory. And there is your surf belt tensioner, drive belt tensioner. So we have the drive belt idler pulley right here. Now we're doing the tensioner and the drive belt pulley at the same time. You do not take, need to take the alternator out, the AC compressor out, or the bottom surf belt tensioner to get to this. But we just took the tensioner out, so now I just wanna show you real quick. Everything would still be in here, and all you would need is a 14 millimeter socket, shallow, and an extra ratchet. 
counterclockwise, break that bolt free, and then just pull this pulley out. Here we have the factory surf belt tensioner and surf belt idler pulley and the surf belt from our 2013 Camry. And here we have our kit that we sell at the 1A Auto site. So you get a whole new bracket and, and tensioner, comes as one piece, a new idler pulley, same diameter, actually it's a little bit thicker in metal, it's actually heavier, I can tell you that. And the bolt hole has a stronger bearing in it, you can see it's a bigger bearing and they provide this guide for the actual bolt because you're going to reuse the old bolt. Put it in on the back side like that and the new surf belt. So you can buy the whole kit to do the job in one sweep. If you need this part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. So now I'm going to install the new idler pulley for the surf belt and the new one comes with this bushing. It's a spacer to make up for the difference of the new size oversized bearing. You're going to put that in the back like that. Then you're going to use the old bolt with the extra wide washer for the front here and it's going to pop right through like that and see how it makes up the difference on the size of the bolts and the diameter. Now we're going to find the mounting hole. I'm going to put it right in there. Hand tighten it down, this is st it's still the same bolt, so it's a 14 millimeter socket. And the manufacturer's specs is 40 foot pounds on this. Okay, I bottomed it out, now I'm gonna get my torque wrench and torque it to 40 foot pounds. Here is the new drive belt tensioner. So the long bolt goes on the top here, and then we have the four same size bolts. So I'm going to put it in this way first. It just mounts right behind this bracket. There we go. Start that by hand. I don't forget the difficult one. You most can't see it. I like to go back and double check all the bolts. The more that the bolts go in, because it really centers the, the bracket. Just in case, heaven forbid I caught a burr and I thought it was going in straight. That is not a fun repair on aluminum. All right, I'm gonna tighten those down with my electric. Get the two center ones first. All right, now they're all bottomed out and I'm gonna get the torque specs. So the torque specs is 32 foot-pounds. I think I'm gonna have to get an extension. I'm gonna go from the center out. I'm gonna do the center bolt first. I grabbed my angled, my swivel socket because the tightness in here. Okay, double check everything. Go back over it, same 32 foot pounds. There you go. Now we can mount that alternator. So now that the tensioner is installed, we can pick up the AC compressor once again and line it up. 
Let's install the bolts. I'm gonna put the two top ones on first. Seems like it's easier to see and make sure those line up right. And then the bottom one should be a lot easier, fall right in. There's a bracket on the bottom right side. Make sure the bolt goes through that bracket. It's a 12 millimeter, so I'm just gonna put my electric 3 8 with a swivel socket to bottom them out. So I just put them down with my electric 3 8 gun and I'm just gonna confirm it that they're really tight, nothing's going on. There's not really any specs that I could find. So it's pure judgment. So on this alternator, almost on all alternators, back with the bolt goes through here and there is always an, a bolt that is fitted into the bracket of the alternator, but it has a slide to it, slides. Um, I like to use a brass punch. They do make tools for it, I just don't have the tool because brass really won't damage it. And this gets pulled in with the bolt as it gets tightened. It'll actually slide this forward and there'll be, a, looks like a washer, and that's actually this full spacer coming out. So to get it to go back into the bracket, I always take a brass punch like this, and I hit it with a hammer, and you can see how it slid itself out. Now that slider right there to that bolt is probably about another half inch thick inside there. Now it goes in ease on the bracket. I don't have to fight with it. Make sure the harness is out of the way. Bring it down. I'm gonna bring the front part in first, and see how it, I, I have play there now? It's because I pushed that bracket back, the bushing and that makes it a lot easier. We know that was a long bolt. So now I'm gonna put the long bolt in on the top so I'll have a pivoting motion to line up the bottom. As easy as that. And start it. Now I've got the two bottom bolts. This is the front one and this is the back one that goes to that bracket. Put the front on first. Bring it right up front here. That definitely gives it a lot easier alignment for the back one now. Because you can't really get your hand back there. I can barely get my hand back there. So you might have to start this with a socket and an extension. Okay, I'm gonna tighten both of these down. Hand tighten as much as I can. I'm actually gonna get my 3 8 gun. I mean my ratchet. Once again, I'm just using a 3 8 ratchet and socket. I'm gonna put my 12 millimeter swivel on the extension back through the back side here and snug up that back bolt. Okay, now I'm just gonna tighten this up. It just has to be snugged. And then it's got the bolt going straight on. I'm just gonna snug that up. Now let's put all the electrical stuff back together. So we got this connector. This one over here. I've got that bracket. I've got to put the bolt back on. Um, alternator regulator right here. battery cable. The bigger bolt of the two for these brackets goes the closest one on the alternator. Put this clip on there too. Don't forget to put your cam sensor back on. There we go. And then this last little one goes down to the middle bracket on the AC compressor. It's down here further. So now I've got all the bracket harness bolts back in. Just snug them down. I don't reef on them, you'll snap them. And then I'm gonna put the 10 millimeter socket on the cable. Make sure that boot goes over. 
All right, now we're gonna pick it up and slide it right in. Now that little air thing is gonna be the only thing that's gonna really hopefully be in your way. And the radiator hose. Just push that down over the alternator. Might have to keep pushing that AC condenser a little bit. All right, now let's see if we're in our mouse down there. Nope, I'm gonna pick it up. There we go. Okay, that's in. Let's see if we can thread that through. Now once this is tightened, to do the bottom ones, I'm gonna raise it up so I can see it. I can see it pretty clearly from down below instead of trying to work without being able to see what I'm doing. So now I've got those on and I'm going to put the top support bar on, bracket, radiator bracket, and then raise her up. So we get the two bushings here. I'm gonna go right on top of those ears and we'll get the bracket. Okay, here comes the radiator support. Now I'm going to grab that release hood cable. Remember how this was mounted. Ah, there it is, get it up there. So make sure you put that down below. Let's find that clip. There it is. And I know that it went right in here. Get that out of the way. Oh, look at that. Put all the bolts back in. Start them by hand. All right, so I'm gonna put the center one in first. None of this is Torx. It's just tight as tight. I've got those two in the bottom one, but I wanna tighten that one up. All right, let's put the Hood release latch on. Then the one down below. All right, let's get that ratchet to work. This one's pretty tight already by hand. Yeah. Okay, I'm really gonna snug them in. These two right here. Nope, that's not fast forward. That's how fast I am. <laughs> Don't blink. Not so fast over here. All right. Now let's do the top two. This lovely air box intake right there. Now there was, if I put this upper hose on, clamp, camp, camp, clamp, <laughs> camp. There we go. Oh, thank you. And then we have the lower hose over here on this bracket. Nice. Factory line still has the blue paint on it. Lines right up with that notch. Come on now, did you see that? <laughs> it was on, it came right off. Beautiful, it looks good. So you have a guide pin here. It's in that shroud and the two mounting bolts. So line that tab up. Place it down. I'm gonna put the hose right on. And then you can just take your bolts, start them, 
And then I can use my electric gun. So now I'm gonna work this harness back down over. Oh, see? I jumped to conclusions with that one. This is the cutout. Put that harness right in there. Then there's one right down there. Now we got the main fan module. That's the wiring right there. Here I click. And now I'm going to connect that EVAP connector off of the air housing. Upside down. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, here we go. Nice. Work the two vacuum lines down in. Mount everything, lines up. Harness. And two little bolts. Now we can put the engine cover on. So you've got these little rubber bushings that are gonna go on these metal studs. Push down and they pop right into place. Now we're gonna put our top um, shroud on and it's got all these push pins that you basically, you push down on them. That's how you pop them out. To push, put them back in, just take the pin push it all the way up, <laughs> use the car, and now that's ready to go in. Just push it down, flush, like that. Now that's all that is left is to fill it with coolant. So whenever doing a radiator or any coolant fill system, we sell this, maybe you've seen one of them before, but we sell it on our website. And it's a coolant funnel, a self burper. It works really good. Um, it's been around for a long time. But this kit comes with all new modern stuff. I have one of the original ones that came out probably close to 15 years ago. I'm not gonna date myself. But it doesn't come with all these cool attachments. So we know we have the European small. So I'm gonna use that one. It comes with two of them. You have one that's wider than the other, as far as the prongs go, and all these adapters that go with it. And the, I like how they're color-coded because once you use it enough, you can say, oh, I know that the purple is for GMs, and the black is for like Fords, or vice versa, and then you've got little, the little uh, imports. A couple of elbows. Okay. So let's see how this works. So the first thing you want to do is, on this radiator, it has a raised neck to it. So you're going to find the one with the shortest fill. That would be that green one. Now I'm going to look at my radiator, and I know that that's, that could be it, or well, that could be it. So let's try this one first. And you want it to be snug. And I locked out, perfect. So then you just take your funnel, Push it down in, take the stopper out. I'm going to put all this stuff aside. It's not used on this car. And now you take your coolant of choice. I have some aftermarket Asian coolant for Asian engines, all aluminum engines. And it's already pre mixed. And you just start to fill your car. And it will self burp, it doesn't make a mess. I could just keep filling that right up. It'll just drop itself right down and burp away. Now we're going to install our surf belt, aka drive belt, on a Camry. So I'm going to bring it down to the top here. And I'm going to show you a diagram of how the belt goes in case you don't have access to one or if you didn't take a good picture. Just make it easy for you. So it's going to loop down over the harmonic balancer, around the tensioner, and then come off the harmonic balancer. <laughs> Sorry. So let's do that together. See if we can get both of them all down there together. 
So now that the surf belt is put on, everything looks good. Check it, make sure it's all in line with the pulleys, not off one by one gear, you know, or one line of tooth. Um, before I put the shield on and the fender well, I like to run the car, because I want to run it, make sure it goes around several times, make sure it doesn't slide off, or I can't foresee something and it is off a rib. You don't want to have it all back together and then you got to do it all over again. So we'll start her up and make sure it looks good. Now that we've run our vehicle, I'm going to put the fender shield on. Remember that had that nose piece that went up in the front here? That's got that little plastic push pin. So first thing I'm going to do is put one of the top bolts on. And then I'll put my second bolt. And now I can look up through here, put my push pin in. Ten millimeter socket. When I put the shield back up, I've got the R for right side, which would be the passenger side. You can see the cutout of the fender well right here. So I'm going to guide it in. So you want the tab from the bumper underneath, and you want to put all these little flares up under like that. So I'm going to put one bolt in and hold it. And then I'm going to go over here and I've got my fender guide here. So that's going to go on top there, then that one. Now this has that rubber piece, remember? I'm going to get my electric gun with my 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to do the same on the driver's side, which is the plastic that says L. So that's going to go overlap up inside. And the one time, the one piece I put on, <laughs> the one bolt I tighten up, of course, like that, up inside the fender flare. There we go. So now I can take my rubber piece here that up. I'm going to make sure I line that up. Okay, up in the front here. Get this one. Get this one that overlaps. So this piece is going to go down underneath it. And then we have a push pin that I'm going to put in right here. And then the last one is a replacement push pin to rehook up your negative battery cable. Just bring it right over the post. Make sure it goes down all the way. Hold it firmly and add 10 millimeter wrench. Just tighten it up. Good to go. So now we're ready to run our vehicle and let the coolant burp in the overflow fill tank that we have. That kind of, it's a coolant burping tool. So you're gonna wanna run this with the heat on the max and at vent with AC off. And uh, you can turn the blower on just a little if you want. We just wanna make sure that the hot coolant circulates through the heater core. And that way you get the proper level. So after about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, that should be full temperature for this car. Uh, just make sure you hear your coolant fans come on uh, because you did replace them. If you didn't replace them, you disconnected them. Either way, the coolant fans coming on is a good indication that the PCMs get the proper signal from the ECT sensor that your thermostat's working and the coolant's full. So, have fun. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.